I'm Steve for This Hook With Cars and today I'm back with the Ford Model A. In previous videos I got the engine running and the car driving, but right now that's only good for driving around the parking lot. Today I want to take a look at the coolant system so that I can take the car out on the road. Let's take the radiator cap off and look down there, see if we see any signs of coolant. This is of course a non-pressurized system. So the coolant cannot use pressure to go above its normal boiling point. And at least up here, I don't see any signs of anything. It does feel slightly moist though. Underneath the hood, everything looks all right until we get down to the lower radiator hose where we can see a lot of evidence of where it has been leaking. So I'm going to take all of this apart. Well, we didn't encounter any coolant at this level. It's pretty rusty in here. So I'm also going to unbolt this piece. I'll come back for this one later. Okay, we do have water at this level. So I'll need to get a pan to put under here. I don't think this clamp is even going to come undone. I think it's too rusted. This hose is just falling apart. I don't think I'm going to get this clamp off either. If we look inside there, there's a lot of sludge. I guess it's not clogged. It's just the angle that the pipe was at was holding all that water in but you can see all of the sediments that have gathered in the bottom of this. There's the last radiator hose. Now let's see if we can get this off. Look at all the corrosion that has built up over the years inside there. You really get an idea of the buildup when we look inside the engine. I was able to get this nut loosened up. This one doesn't seem as bad as the lower hoses and pipes were. Now I just have the water pump left. See if we can get the water pump loose. There we go. If you're doing this job at home, you can see if you pull the water pump out all the way, it's going to hit the radiator and you won't be able to remove it. You could of course remove the whole radiator or you could take these struts right here off and then tilt the radiator back enough that you can get your water pump out. The hood is supported from the top up here as well. So you will want to watch out that you are supporting the hood in some way, or you're removing that as well. For now, I'm just going to loosen these struts so that I can tilt the radiator out enough that I can get the water pump off. I will need to close this to do the other side. So let's see if I can pull the radiator back far enough to get this out. I think I'm going to spin the fan this way. That way there isn't a fan blade coming down to the bottom of the radiator. There we go. And here it is. You can see the fins on the water pump. So the belt drives the pulley, which turns the fan, which also turns the water pump. So let's get over to the bench. First thing I need to do is get the fan and pulley off. That's held on by a castle nut that had a cotter pin going through it. The fan and pulley are held on by a taper joint, so I'll have to use the press to push the shaft down to break that taper.
This one having not been taken apart forever, you may not have gotten this one with a hammer. You may have had to use a press like this because that was a lot of force when this one popped loose. Now I need to remove the key. Now I have the shaft pressed off. I have everything cleaned up now. The water pump housing is not an original type. This one has bushings in it. Originally, there would have been a rope seal back here to seal the water from coming out from the shaft. As far as our shaft and impeller, there's not a whole lot different here from what an original one would be. However, when I cleaned it up, there's a lot of corrosion right here. If we slip this through here, we can see all the corrosion here on the shaft is going to end up right where the water is trying to be blocked by the bushing. So if I were to reassemble this like this, it's going to leak. So I did get a new shaft with an impeller on it. This new impeller has a different design. The old one had four straight blades. This new one has three curved blades on it. It is the same size as the old one. I also got a new officially licensed nut key and pin, as well as a new gasket for the water pump. I've already taken the grease zerk out and I have packed that with water pump grease. Water pump grease is a special grease that is resistant to water or in some cases is soluble in water so that if it were to get into the radiator, it dissolves eventually in the water and does not clog your radiator up. Unfortunately, new leakless types water pumps are for sale, but none are available right now. Otherwise, I would have bought one of those. So this is what I have to use for now. In this case, it's just a simple reassembly of all the parts. Now the water pump's ready to go back on the car. I have the water inlet and outlet media blasted now and I'm going to powder coat them in a cast iron color. If I ever restore the engine and want to paint it the original green, this powder coat will be sandable and you can paint over it. Now I can take them and put them in the oven. They should be done. Let's take a look. Color looks spot on. Let's wait for these to cool down. It should be cool enough to touch now. Yeah, I like this color. This color does a good job of simulating cast iron. I think this will look just the part. I have all of the surfaces cleaned up and everything is ready to go back on. When I put the gaskets on, I will be using a little bit of blue gasket maker because that will help to fill in all the little imperfections from the pitting of the rusting of these old parts. Make sure that these parts don't leak in the future. All the cast iron pieces are reinstalled. Now I can install the hoses.
On our lower radiator hose, we had one hose here and a little hose there with a pipe that spanned the gap between. This pipe is rusted too far, so I'm not going to use it. Also, the petcock is completely frozen. So I've gotten a new pipe with a new petcock, and I'll be installing that instead. All the hoses are in. There's one more piece before I put the water in. I did buy a new fan belt, so I'll get that installed. And then I'm only gonna put water into the engine for now. That way I can drain it later and get all the crud that was in the engine out. And also, if there is a leak, it's only water. I can get all the leaks fixed before I actually put antifreeze in. And I can start putting in water and watching for leaks. Looks like I have a leak at the water pump gasket. I'll have to tighten that up. I retorqued the water pump bolts and it looks like that took care of it. That's going to be it for today for the Model A. It is very close to being able to drive on the street. I will have to do something about these tires at some point. And beyond that, there's still a lot more to do on this car. So if you'd like to see more videos with this Ford Model A, comment below and click subscribe.